first this evening, less than 90 minutes after the full-time whistle sounded at Craven Cottage, Aston Villa have sacked Stephen Gerrard. Aston Villa moved swiftly last night to appoint the former Arsenal manager to replace Stephen Gerrard. On the 26th of August 2010, Aston Villa sent out 11 players onto the pitch at Villa Park, led by the likes of Carew, Agbong Lahore and Ashley Young to name a few, against Rapid Vienna after drawing one all in the Europa League qualifying first leg. They came up short that day, losing 3-2 thanks to two late goals, and little did those Villa fans who attended Villa Park that day realise it would be almost 13 years to the day because on the 23rd of August 2023, Aston Villa returned to European football after a 13-year hiatus, taking the pitch up at Hibernian and thanks to an Ollie Watkins hat-trick, taking a 5-0 victory back to Villa Park where we compiled that and got through to the Europa Conference League proper. Our Europe journey has come to an end at the hands of Olympiakos. We got to the semi-finals. This is going to be a review of our entire Europe campaign as we look forward to hopefully Champions League football in the near future. If you are enjoying more long-form content like this, please do leave a like. It helps me out massively to know what you guys like. Subscribe for more. Obviously, we'll be doing this for the Premier League as well. Without further ado, let's get into Europe's toughest test for us in the end being the Olympiacos but into Aston Villa's European journey from 2023 to 2024. Let's talk Villa. And then Aston Villa moved on to the group stages. We're going to be going through each of these games one by one, showing you the sofa score player of the match from an Aston Villa point of view. We're going to keep a tally of that uh, and do final stats and review at the end. But let's get in to the group stage. So we start off and Aston Villa's campaign, as you can see, if we get rid of the 2024 NFL draft, started well, in the worst way possible. A 3-2 loss in Poland to Ligia Warsaw, uh, despite goals from Dina and an early goal from John Duran. Not enough to get us the three points. Our sofa score player of the match was Leon Bailey with a 7.5. But we did move on from that and go back and bounce back in a 1-0 victory uh, over Moss Star. I'm not gonna bother trying to pronounce the first bit of it because it'll be pointless. And our highest rated player that game, surprisingly joint, uh, Yuri Tielemans beginning his redemption arc from his Fattyman's era as he was coined at the start uh, and Clement Longley as well getting an 8 rating there I believe it was uh, a jo that was the John McGinn goal that you've already seen at the start where we won in the 95th minute from there we went from strength to strength going on to a 4-1 win against AZ Alkmaar who I believe were undefeated at the time in the Eredivisie that game was probably one of our best games in Europe this season we look like a team on a mission and as you can see our highest rated player there being our captain, John McGinn, who also got a goal in this game. But an all-round fantastic performance from everyone, as you can see there. Kamara, Tielemans, Watkins, Leon Bailey, all getting above a 7 rating. And it was just strength to strength from there. Obviously, back-to-back -back games, the way this Conference League works, is you effectively do your games and then do them again in reverse. So uh, AZ came to Villa Park and we got a nice little 2-1 victory over them when they did come down to Birmingham. As you can see, our highest rated player being Leon Bailey, who in this group stage of this competition was really, really important for us. Diego Carlos and Douglas Louise also putting in good shifts. But again, Ollie Watkins, I think he got a goal in this game as well. 7.2, Martinez 7.2. Everyone was really chipping in. This was when I think Villa were at our real peak in terms of our performance this season. It was around the same time we were about to go into our games where we'd obviously famously beat City and Arsenal in the same week. And we were really, really on top, top form. And it just got even better. We revenged 
our original loss to Ligia Warsaw, beating them 2-1 at Villa Park thanks to goals from Moreno and Diaby. Uh, a really early goal from Diaby, actually. A lot of early goals against Ligia Warsaw, I wonder why. Um, Musa Diaby actually was our top-rated player that game, coming in at 7.7. .7. Douglas Louise with a 7.5 and Moreno with a 7.4 when we thought he might be back to full strength after his injury that he suffered last season against Liverpool. Um, again, though, a good performance all round from a lot of players. Yuri Tielemans playing out on the right-hand side, getting a 7.1. Douglas Louise, like we've already said, long lay as well, getting above a 7. No Ollie Watkins for this game. Game. Um, so, you know, Diaby and Duran doing a good job against a strong Ligia Warsaw side uh, and getting that result for us. And then we finished our group. Uh, I think we already knew we'd qualified by this point, so I don't think they were really going to be going for it 100%. Um, but again, it was one all. Zaniolo getting one of his, I think it was his first uh, goal for the club and he was our joint highest performer with surprise surprise Matty Cash what is he doing anywhere near any of these lists but again everyone we played a bit of a different formation here as well but everyone chipping in Jacob Ramsey may God rest his soul hopefully he's back soon getting a seven Matty Cash Pal Torres we had Philip Marshall in goal this game we were just really going through the motions we picked up uh, the, the final point that we needed if we go back across to our 2023-2024 season as you can see here uh, finishing top of the group there four wins one draw one loss uh, a goal difference of plus five and an advance to the round of 16 but who would we face then we move on to the round of 16 and of course we drew former Champions League winners, European mega giants, AFC Ajax, who thankfully for us were going through a transition phase thanks to the losses of the likes of Anthony and Eric Ten Hag. I bet you never thought you'd hear that. I'm sure there's certain teams in Europe that would love to lose those two right now. But luckily for us, like I say, they weren't the Ajax of old. And we went into this game full of confidence. And that confidence might have been, or looked like it had been, misplaced when Aston Villa went to the Netherlands uh, and played Ajax and got a nil-nil draw as you can see here now we were away from home and you can see the attacking momentum did heavily swing in Ajax's favour especially in the first half but if you watch this game and if we go down to the player ratings here you can see we had a plan first of all Esri Konza's red card was a joke but our plan was to go to the Netherlands stifle Ajax's attack particularly Brian Brobby that you will see only got a 6.8 SOFA score rating here. Martinez, Longley and Morgan Rogers being our outstanding performers. But if you watch this game like I did, they only had one shot on target and it was obvious what we were there to do. We were there to manage the fixture over the two legs. Unai Emery is a European masterclass merchant. We were going to manage the fixtures over two legs and bring them back to Villa Park with it all to play for. And that is exactly what we've done here. If we go over to the second leg, as you can see, and you saw by the amazing John Jada Duran goal in the opening clip to this segment, we beat Ajax 4-0 at Villa Park to progress through to the quarterfinals. You can see there the player ratings, Ollie Watkins getting a seven and a goal. Musa Diaby, our outstanding performer in this fixture, getting a goal and I believe an assist. Leon Bailey with a 7.7, Douglas Louise 7.7 and Matty Cash 7.4. Was he actually decent for us in Europe? Have I, have I Mandela affected the fact that he's a terrible player? I don't even know. Um, one of the worst performers on the pitch though, Jordan Henderson. Something quite nice about that, isn't there? But we did beat them 4-0 and we progressed to the quarterfinals and it was a trip to Wee oui, Wee oui, Francais. And Aston Villa became no strangers to getting some of the toughest draws in the Conference League. We were playing a very game and well-managed Losk Lille side, the team that have the likes of Angel Gomez playing for them, a player that's well known through the England youth ranks at Manchester United. We were going to be at Villa Park first and we needed to go and make an impression. If we were going to get to the semi-finals, could we do it? And yes, it looked like we could at the start. A early Ollie Watkins goal as we beat Lille 2-1 at Villa Park made it look like it was going to be plain sailing. Apart from that little <laughs> that little Diacarte goal in the 84th minute that just snuck them back into this tie. And if we scroll down here, you can see 
We line up slightly differently due to injuries. Again, injuries and fatigue really start to come in to the Conference League at this stage. Esri Concer and Leon Bailey being outstanding down the right-hand side for us, but John McGinn and Martinez being our heroes in this game. John McGinn really stepped up to the plate and led this team in this game alongside Ollie Watkins, who got a fantastic goal in this fixture and really set us up. But as you can see, Lille came to play and they came to play well. A lot of their players getting above seven. And that was evident as they beat us, uh, unfortunately, 2-1 <laughs> at Lille uh, when we went there. And it took us, uh, well, it took Emmy Martinez's penalty heroics, as you've already seen in the introduction to this segment, to get us through to our first European semi-final in what I would say is yonks um, with Leon Bailey missing his penalty for Villa um, but then Bay, uh, is it Benjamin Andre I believe their captain missed the all-important one for them as you can see again some good performances and that man Matty Cash who did get the goal late on in that fixture to send us through to extra time and penalties being our outstanding performer on the night alongside Esri Konsa, Emilio Martinez and Luca Dini. It was a heavily defensive performance, and this was when the Aston Villa legs started to go, and I think everyone could see it. It was evident for everyone. Our legs were running out. Would that impact us in the semi-final? You already know it did. And here's where it starts to get sour. The semi-finals. We draw Olympiacos, statistically the team with the least chance to win the Conference League that was left in the semi-finals. But Villa on their 54th and 56th, I think it was, games of the season with a mountain higher than Everest of injuries behind us. Went into this game and I think everyone was on edge a little bit. Let's see what happened and analyse it. And yes... Welcome to the day that it all fell apart. Aston Villa welcomed Olympiacos at Villa Park and we came out due to an El Cabri hat-trick losing 4-2. Now perhaps the fact that the finals in Athens and Olympiacos are from Athens had something to do with their fire, their determination. Perhaps it was just that Villa had run out of steam as it definitely looked like in the second leg of this, this fixture. But like I say, it did not go well and in terms of player ratings Ollie Watkins did get a goal uh, I think Diaby was our highest rated player yeah there with an eight uh, he also got a goal but was subbed off Ollie, uh, Ollie Watkins that we've already gone over John Duran came on and played really well won a penalty uh, that unfortunately was missed by Douglas Louise who had a little bit of a stinker um, and Leon Bailey done well as well as you can see in there Morgan Rogers struggled and then all of our backline struggled Robin Olsen with a six Longley concert and Matty Cash all sitting on six point ones and it didn't get better in the second leg of this fixture if it lets me switch over here. And as you can see, it didn't get better. 2-0 to Olympiacos. El Cabi getting his fourth and fifth goals of the fixture to ultimately dump a very tired looking and very leggy Aston Villa out of Europe. John McGinn, Leon Bailey and Ollie Watkins are highest performers in those games. Paul Torres and Luca Dina also having a good game as well. But as you can see, we had to change stuff around so much. A back five, Musa Diaby playing on the left-hand side of midfield. Ollie Watkins up front on his own. And we run out of steam. We run out of oomph. We run out of everything. And ultimately, we were dumped out of Europe. It was an incredibly disappointing performance over the two legs. We were outplayed and out-spirited, out-hearted, whatever you want to say. Congratulations to Olympiacos. They fully deserved to go through and enjoy the final in their hometown. So let's review the competition, our play in it, and what's happened as a total. First of all, let's go through statistically our best players of the tournament and what I think about how all of our players performed. I would like to say up until probably the second leg against Lille, I thought we looked outstanding in Europe. Yes, we had a couple of you know, results that perhaps didn't go quite our way. The 0-0 draw in Ajax, the 3-2 loss to Ligia Warsaw at the start of the campaign. But overall, it was a fantastic campaign. And I thought that all of our players played fantastically well uh, up until that point where I just, I literally think their legs 
just gave up on them. But if we throw the stats up here and I pop them up on my phone so that I can get them correct, um, we can see that statistically our player of the tournament was none other than Leon Bailey, getting in a 7.35 average safer score rating. Just behind him was Martinez and Douglas Louise and Ollie Watkins tied for third place. Coming in at fourth, we have Yuri Tielemans, who has been an absolute revelation for me this season. And the fact we got him for free is insane. And then fifth, technically because of the joint bit of it, is John McGinn with a 7.05. Just underneath them, Musa Diaby, John Duran, Matty Cash and Diego Carlos. In terms of goals, obviously Ollie Watkins, our top goal scorer this season, closely followed by McGinn and DRB with three, Leon Bailey and John Duran with two, and then a plethora of players who also got one goal. And then assists, Leon Bailey and Douglas Louise top the field with four apiece, John McGinn just below them with three, and then Tielemans, DRB and Matty Cash with one each. Do I agree with the statistics? I think yes, I think all in all, if I had to pick my top three standout players from this tournament, it would have been McGinn, Bay, uh, sorry, not McGinn, uh, Watkins, Bailey and Martinez. I think McGinn's performed fantastically over every competition as our captain, so shout out to him. I've mentioned your name now, I'm going to talk about your meatball. Um, but I think those three, I mean, to be fair, that's pretty much a theme of our season, those three being outstanding performers. I like the fact that Yuri Tielemans has got a shout out in there as well because I do believe that he has been absolutely fantastic for us this season after that bumpy start as well um, but yeah I completely agree standout player of the tournament Leon Bailey congratulations you were immense in Europe and I hope we get to see you in the Champions League next year as well and in terms of overall as a competition look is it disappointing does it feel like a golden opportunity to win a European trophy after seeing the likes of West Ham do it Yes, but West Ham were battling for mid-table whilst we're battling for fourth spot during their campaign. So there are levels, I suppose, to this game. Um, and I feel like, you know, our main priority, and Emery said it since the start of the season, is always going to be the 38 games that we play in the Premier League. Europe would have been nice. FA Cup would have been nice. Carabao Cup would have been nice, but it wasn't to be. I think the manner we went out was disappointing to lose 6-2 to a Greek team over two legs. Obviously, that's going to sting. Obviously, that's going to hurt. We have to take it on the chin and move on. If I would have made the review after that game, I would have absolutely ripped into every player on that team and probably said sell half of them. But in hindsight, it is what it is. Look, yes, it feels like a golden opportunity missed, but it's still our first time in Europe in 13 years and we got to the bloody semi-final. So you've got to be happy at least with that. And I feel like hopefully it's going to give us a little bit more of oomph now to go and secure this Champions League spot in the Premier League. Overall, I think generally it is a disappointing campaign in Europe, just if we're isolating this campaign alone, to not win this campaign when it feels so winnable is disappointing. In the overarching story of the rise of Aston Villa again, it's been an absolute pleasure and I can't wait to do it all over again in Europe next season if you have enjoyed this video guys please do leave a like subscribe it means the world share this video around it's our europa conference league in review i'll see you in the next one up the villa be nice to everyone don't ever forget that spread kindness